the last question that we're going to do is on dynamics. There's really nothing that's new here. And then you're going to do exam questions for me for the rest of the lesson. And then for the last 15 minutes of the lesson, we'll do a new spec exam question um, as well. OK? I'll come back to that slide in just a second. OK? Yes? That is the value of mu that we worked out earlier on. Same, same surface, we seen, still use that mu. OK. Um, dynamics questions. There's a couple of things I'm going to point out. Uh, so it says, a particle is held at rest on a rough plane which is inclined to the horizontal of an angle alpha where tan alpha is 3 quarters. The coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is 0 0.5. The particle is released and slides down the plane. Find the acceleration of the particle and the distance it slides in the first two seconds. So I'll draw my diagram. Same old, same old. Getting a bit boring now, hey? And it's being held at rest on a rough plane. So that means there's probably some kind of force holding it but we're not interested in that bit where someone is holding it. We're interested where the particle is released. So there will be no force from anyone holding it. Okay? We're just going to leave the particle as it is. Um, and we've been told that the angle is alpha. Um, we don't know its mass, though. So what should I call the weight? Um. Yeah, it's going to call the, the weight is going to be mg. We're going to have the normal reaction. What else? Do I need to add on? Yeah, but before that, there's probably another force still. Friction. It's friction. Which way is the friction going to be? Up. Up, because it's going to try and slide down. Mu, we've said, is a half. So I can write 0.5R if I want to. And it's just going to be pretty simple. OK. We've been told, though, that tan alpha is 3 over 4. Do you remember what you have to do for this? Do the triangle. So we get 3 over 4, opposite over adjacent, hypotenuse. So sine alpha is 3 over 5, cos alpha is 4 over 5. Now we're going to come back to what Hamza said, which was to resolve the mg. So we get mg cos alpha, mg sine alpha. Now you probably don't need a special diagram for this one, but hey, I'm doing it anyway. R, 0.5 R, that's the friction. mg cos alpha mg sine alpha. So you've probably noticed the pattern of the order that we do these things. The way that we resolve usually first is that way, because then we can do that way afterwards. So we're just going to keep going and do the same sorts of thing. We're going to resolve in the perpendicular of the plane. So r is mg cos alpha. That's one mark that you get in the exam. So if you've calculated cos alpha incorrectly over here, and you've then put the incorrect answer over here, you don't get the mark. So you're much better just to write cos alpha to start with, and then you can rewrite that as 4 fifths mg, just in case. Then we're going to resolve in the other direction. But when we do that in the other direction, what do we know about this particle? It's not going to be in equilibrium anymore, right? We know it's accelerating, and we know it's accelerating down the plane. So what do I have to use differently instead of just resolve? Good, I have to do f equals ma now. So I'm going to do f equals ma, and that's going down the slope. So I'm going to do mg sine alpha. Looks like I've got a lot of unknowns here, because I don't know what m is, and I don't know what a is, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to do forces down the slope, mg sine alpha minus 0.5r. That's my resultant force. This one, take away this one. And that equals the mass times the acceleration. Hmm, looks like I'm going to get a few unknowns, but let's hope that something's going to work out here. Now, sine alpha is 3 fifths. So I get 3 fifths mg minus 0 0.5 times r. What's 0 0.5 times 4 fifths? 2 fifths. 2 fifths mg equals ma. Good. So it didn't matter about the mass at all. The acceleration is independent of the mass. It could be 5 kilograms, could be 100 kilograms. It's still going to have the same acceleration. So I can cancel out the m's. What's 3 fifths of g take away 2 fifths g? 1 fifth g. One fifth g. So the acceleration is a fifth g. If you want to, you can say that that is, I hope that's right, yeah, 1.96 meters per second squared. So the only difference with dynamics is when you do the second bit, 
it will be f equals ma rather than resolving. What do we need to do for part b to find the distance it slides in two seconds? Good, it's SUVAT. Now, you will find when you're doing these questions, SUVAT and f equals ma often are kind of like coming hand in hand. You may sometimes need to use SUVAT to do something. If you're doing SUVAT, you're probably going to need to find out A, because A is that important value that appears in both SUVAT and F equals MA. A is the bridge that takes you between F equals MA and the SUVAT equations. So we now know that the acceleration is 1.96, and we know that the time that it moves is 2 seconds, because it's asking for that. What else do we know about? It starts, from rest. it starts from rest, so we know that u is equal to 0. And I'm interested in finding s. If you've watched what I do with year 12, you'll see I don't write out s, u, v, a, t, because it's harder to spot what formula you need. If you just write down the three that you know and the one you need, your brain will be much better at picking out the correct SUVAT formula. Where the correct SUVAT formula is? S equals, s equals u, t plus a half. A T squared. You can just see it because you've only got four letters. If you had V there, your brain is terrible at picking out which formula it should be. So I'm just going to sub everything in. U T, well, that's zero. I've got a half times 1.96 times 2 squared. 3.92 meters. Is that rounded or accurate? That's fine. That's fine. So we don't even need to write three significant figures there. Okay. I'm going to just mention this so that it's recorded so when you listen back to it. This question that we said at the beginning, we said it was being held at rest. So there was like a force there and that it was being released. So we just didn't draw that force, OK? The other equivalent of this is where maybe something is given speed at the beginning. And I'm going to say this now because it's going to come up later. We could say that a particle is projected up a slope, OK? Which sounds like you might think if a particle is projected up a slope, that there is some force that someone is pulling it up the slope. But it actually means like a, a ball or something you've thrown. As soon as you've released that thing that you've thrown, there is no extra force that's making it move up. So if it says it's been projected up, there is actually no force pulling it up at all. The only thing that there would be if something was being projected upwards <laughs> is just the friction resisting it. So if you threw something up a plane, there's no force making it move upwards anymore. What's actually going to happen to that thing as it moves up the plane? So it's going to decelerate. It's going to start slowing down because there's only forces making it slow down. Just because you're going to do an exam question later that says it's projected up a plane and I don't want to see anybody putting a force on there to make it go up the plane. There is no force making it go up the plane. And there you go. It's now recorded so you can never, never say you didn't know. <laughs>